Hey everyone, welcome to Ellis Mowers. Pardon the sun angle, it's afternoon sun really gets me here in the garage, which isn't a bad thing when it's cold. I'm um, going to keep working on some a lot of the small projects that I've got going on around here. You'll see I've got riders in the back. Um, I want to get a bunch of the small stuff knocked out before I hit, the, uh, hit a lot of the riders, especially the ones that need a lot of repairs. Um, just because I want to get stuff out of my garage. The next one that we have here is a Murray. It's your three and a half horsepower classic 20 inch push mower. Nothing that I won't get more than about $50 for. However, looks to be in good condition. Um, I pull it and it's kind of hard, but I don't know if it's because of the blade brake being on. Not quite sure. We're going to give this an analysis, see if we can get it back going. It's a Briggs Classic Flathead, so um, those always have a high chance of just being a simple fix to see if this is going to be one as well. We're going to have to, I um, think I'm going to install a, a shutoff switch as well um, versus a um, bail handle cable just because um, I have a bunch of switches here and all that. Um, and I want to try it on just a cheap little mower like this. That way I can kind of go forward. If I don't have cables for something, uh, I can use this as an alternative. So let's go ahead and get started. So I've done a lot of filming today. I'll have to put this camera on the charger for a minute after I do this synopsis. But... Let me show you what's going on with it so far. Give you a quick gander at it. This should be like a late 90s. I always like guessing the year before I uh, show it on camera. Before I show it on camera. Actually, I tell you what. So this is a uh, 9J902 050624, which means this is a 2005. So this is right when Murray got taken over by Briggs & Stratton, which is kind of interesting. I didn't know they made these 20 horsepower classics this late. I thought they were more like a 90s special or early, and maybe an early 2000s. I didn't think 2005. That's good. It's a newer mower than I thought. Um, pull rope will likely need replacing. It looks like it's starting to fray there. Nothing too crazy. That's three bolts and... That's off the oil. Let's show you the oil really quickly. Oil is very dark. However, there is some oil in there, and that's all we need. It is, and I don't know if it's because it has water in it, a little bit hard to pull over. Let me show you. You see it's hard to pull over but if we look under the mower I did see a little bit of stuff under the blade so let's look at that real quick you can see a bunch of junk here under the blade so we'll have to get that taken care of as well and that might be the cause of why it's doing what it's doing the blade obviously will need to be sharpened also somebody did put a brand spanking new plug in it so that's good um, and almost a given that this thing's going to need a diaphragm too. So I just need to figure out why we are getting so much resistance whenever I'm pulling it. And it shouldn't be because of this brake here because somebody has already taken the brake spring off of it. So, and I almost see a little bit of residue of mice in there too. So we'll have to look under that cover while we put the pull rope on as well. See if it's, uh got some mice action that's causing it to bind up as well so let me put you on the charger what I'm going to do first is just take these three bolts off and I'll go ahead and put a pull rope in it while I got it off while y'all are charging y'all seen that plenty of times um, pretty easy to put a pull rope in one of these just especially when you still have a pull rope in it just pull it out all the way lock it down with some pliers and then just put it back in cut it to length Call it a day. So let me put the pull rope in, let y'all charge up a little bit, and uh, we'll see what is under 
the shroud and I will make sure to show you and uh, catch y'all in just a second. Alrighty guys, I got y'all charging, but I don't know if you can see that white spot right there. <laughs> Critter nest. So I was right. I just got to get some gloves and clean that out. It sounds like I just need to remove the plug. It sounds like there's either some water or some fuel in the um, in the intake that just needs to be purged. So I'm going to go ahead and just take care of all that. I'm just going to remove the plug and just kind of turn it by hand and get it out of there. I'm going to get rid of that little nest there. And um, then we will resume and uh, figure out if we can get this thing to run. Probably put a diaphragm on it while we're at it. Alrighty, it's starting to kind of dark and late and cold on this particular day. Um, I wanted to update you. What I have done is I have replaced the plug. The old one is sitting right there. Uh, I think it was too oiled over and had been hit with water too much and it had fouled out. I just put a small let me show you, zip tie here to keep the oh, um, blade, the bail switch in the on position just for testing purposes. I will remedy that. Or at least attempt to with a uh, toggle switch later on in the video but let me give you some carb spray I already tested this out I wanted to show you that it at least kicked it kicked over for us so It sounds really good, so that's a good thing. Um, frame's pretty good on as well. So, and all the parts are here. I'll even show you the air filter real quick. The air filter even looks like it had just recently been replaced right before um, this mower set, which is good. So I don't even have to replace that. I just have to sharpen the blade and change the oil. But for this evening, I'm going to go ahead and clean up, and I'll pick up this uh, on another day. So I'll see you then. All right, guys, so uh, next day here, we're going to start off simply by cleaning the tank. The tank is in, uh, looks like it's got some pretty nasty stuff. All I've already gone is, or all I've done already, taking the half inch bolt out here. There's a 3 8 inch in the front, and uh, we just slide it out. Just like that. And then just get it out of your little Z band there. And uh, I don't know, it looks like we got some oil or something in this thing. Let me get my glass. It's better than seeing rust, though. Let's see what we got here. If I can even get it out. Uh, a little bit of rust, that's all right. can see that right there a little bit of rust in there but we'll get that out uh, what I'll do is I just uh, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, take off the looks like hold on a second no we got it thought we we're missing the o-ring and the gasket for the carburetor or the little piece for the carburetor but we are not we'll just pop that back on it's one thing you have to be very careful of whenever you have a uh, lawnmower with one of these classic engines on it next we'll go ahead and do this on camera too we'll take out our screws here i know i could clean this what i usually do is i just clean everything up whenever i finish sometimes i do whenever i first start working on them but this mower is not i mean if they're just super nasty and I, and I know for a fact that they're going to run, but I still have pretty high confidence in this one. So we'll take the five screws off. You can impact them off, but you just want to be careful. We're going to go ahead and replace the diaphragm and the gasket on this as well. Um, just knowing that this has probably sat a little while. 
that's going to need it. Again, I don't want to take a bunch of time on this because I'm really not, I mean, this is a $50 mower all day long. No more than a $50 mower all day long. So, man, I can't tell you over the years how many of these I've sold. It's probably been over 10 or close to 10, and they all, they all come back. They all come back to life. They don't all come back to my garage after I fix them. So the most simple, reliable mowers. All right, so I got the five screws off. Let's pull this off. Um, okay, so let's see the pickup tube. Everything looks clear. We'll give it a we'll give it a run through real quick with the carb cleaner. Obviously, we'll, we will replace the diaphragm and the gasket because I know that's probably years old. Um, we do have some crud in the uh, pickup tube area, so um, we'll get that cleaned out, washed out, however we get it out. Um, we'll get as much of this rust out as well, of the uh, or junk, whatever it is. Looking around the tank, the tank does not look like it has any soft spots or holes in it, so that's good. That's one thing you always have to check. This is the older style, the old... I guess more metal tank. It's not black. I think those black tanks are a little bit thinner. These are uh, these are pretty good. So let me get the rust out and we'll get that out. We will put a new diaphragm on it, and uh, I'll rejoin you when we put the new diaphragm on it. Alrighty, I got the uh, tank. I guess as clean as I'm gonna get it. Um, just washed it out with some water, and that mostly did the trick. Um, what I'm going to do, let me show you. So, these, uh, I get them off of, oh, I can't think of, somewhere off of eBay. I don't get them sent from China. These are actually made in Brazil. The carb diaphragms, so they're called ra racemen. So, I've used the Chinese ones before, and they uh, they are very hit and miss. And I've stopped. I've since stopped using them. Save a little bit of money going off of. Uh, I don't remember what it's called now because it's been a while. It's on eBay, lawnmower. Uh, something that's got a yellow lawnmower in the logo <laughs> that has the tongue sticking out. I can't think of the name of it right now. But I've ordered quite a few of them. They're only like $2 and some change as opposed to if you go to a retailer and get them for about 4 to 5 So you save a couple of dollars and whenever you replace, you know, upwards of 10 like I do every year, 10 or more, then, uh, it, you know, you're talking about $20. Um, the little thin thin piece goes first, which is the diaphragm, followed by the gasket. The gasket attaches to the plastic portion of the uh, carburetor. The diaphragm sits on the gas tank. Just have to be careful. A lot of times you can just keep the screws in your carburetor if you're easy enough to take it off. Um, it's easy to lose them. You just have, don't have to turn. Just don't turn it upside down. I just took them out just because I sprayed the carburetor while I was at it. If this is just a service item that you're doing, then you may not have to spray the carburetor out. I just did because you know there was some water and some debris and stuff in it. Again, just look down your holes. Make sure that you're not puncturing the gasket with these tapered screws here. And I'm not tightening them down yet, I'm just getting them in there and then we're going to go around and tighten them. I'll tighten this first one on the back and then I'll go in like a star pattern. There. Again, you don't want to tighten the daylights out of it. You just want to get it to where it's snug. 
put back to the back here. Let's see, there we go. I'll say just make sure that that spring and that fuel screen is in there because you don't want to uh, be missing those. You'll have issues with it running rich. Um, also make sure that your uh, O-ring as well as your little plastic ring is in there. It gives it a good seal on the carburetor. While we're here, we'll take a We'll test our intake tube. It's not broken, I can't pull it out or anything. So that should be good. We'll put, we'll put our uh, car back into our Z-bin, push it on, and put our bolts back in. I'll try and finger tight them first because there we go. I just finger tight tighten them first before I uh, I don't really like I said I don't really like to use the impact on these very much because You could very easily break off the tab for the for the gas tank as well as the mounting tab on the engine. And if you do one or both of those, and you're um, kind of up a creek, I have repaired one before, but it is a it's a pain, and it never seals like it's supposed to anymore. So I kind of like using the wrench and stuff on these. Or if you have a very weak impact gun, you can use that. But I, like I said, I don't really recommend it. Okay, that's more than enough. Let me get it off of the bench here. I'll put some gas in it. We'll see if it runs. If it does, then we will go ahead and go about servicing it, putting a pull rope on it, as well as attaching some sort of toggle switch. That way I don't have to use my zip tie method that I'm trying to get away from because I know it's not the safest in the world and I can get a bunch of toggle switches for very little money and wiring costs basically nothing as well. Let me get it off of the bench here. We'll test it out. All right, guys, let's see if it primes. Sometimes it takes a few primes, and sometimes when you rock the tank back and forth, it helps it out as well, especially if it hasn't primed in a while. So let's crank it up. Hopefully it'll run for us.
little bit of oil in the muffler is all it was. for the restart. Excellent. So uh, I think my next step is I'm going to use this as a test subject to wire up a toggle switch. My plan is get a, get a little bit of wire. So here is the uh, kill switch wire, or the kill wire for the coil. Just going to take that off. Basically put a wire, basically put a wire nut around this. Attach it to another wire up to a switch. Which I'm going to ground out right here on this bolt for the uh, pull rope and then I'm going to just uh, probably is it tie a toggle switch right there or something like that the way you can just bump it on and off the way it'd be a lot safer for whoever's using it as opposed to my little zip tie method it's like the best of the worst methods I had tried in the previous years so I wanted to I want to try something different um, so I'm going to go ahead and keep uh, get to working on that and I will uh, see what we can muster here so we don't have much left to do I figured I'd go ahead and take you on the journey of replacing the pull rope as well since we're doing pretty good time wise on this video so 7 16 just loosens this up and you just pull your rope out the good news is, see this one was about borderline as to whether or not I wanted to replace it. Because it's a fit, like I said, it's a $50 mower all day long. But it saves me having somebody come back and be like, my pull rope broke and I have to do it again, you know. Let me grab my impact and a uh, 3 8 and we'll just take the bolts off and we'll take it over the bench and redo this thing. All right, three eighths on the front and two on the sides. Get this off. Okay. So here's the situation with these. Right. So these are the ones where you have to really nowhere to put a screwdriver in you have to wedge like a like a vice grips or something right here on this little tab is what I usually do so we're gonna go ahead and pull this out all the way actually let me grab a vice grips first that way I can kind of prepare so I don't have to hold on to this while I try and further out here and see what it'll do I'll show you before I do this is it will if you do that and just put your vice grips in it'll hold right there see like I can't even pull up you don't need to put a ton of tension because you don't want to break anything but either way we're gonna pull this out all the way I can show it to you the best of my ability. Okay, so that is pretty much all the way. You want to do your best to go ahead and line it up with 
the hole. That way you make it a lot easier to put your new string in. We've got just enough room to put our vice grips right here. Perfect. Now, I'll grab my cutters. And what I'll do is I'll just cut the string on the inside here, right at the knot, because what we're going to do is reference this new string. And then we'll also cut it, we'll just cut it right here. All right, I'm going to take a small screwdriver and just thread the old string through this. Take the new string and cut it to the length of the old string and I will get to the point where we uh, put it back in and rejoin you. Alright guys, here's the trickiest part. It's basically just trying to get the string into the hole which as long as you have a decent string is pretty easy that is it can be challenging um, as long as you cut it off clean then you're okay if you don't cut it off clean that's okay just take like a cigarette lighter or um, some, type of, some type of lighter and uh, that'll get you what you need I always double knot them just because extra insurance they've never come off when I've done this so it does provide a little bit of extra residue or extra hangover whatever you want to call it but I can just kind of pack that in right there and then now we'll take it on the other end other ends a little bit easier we'll just pop it in here it'll go up like this and then we will it'll turn one way or the other we can encourage it with a screwdriver if we need to oh now we got it I like doing the same thing on this side with a double knot I did cut this string a little bit longer just remember to cut it a little bit longer than the rest of the string that you have left but just because you want to leave room for knots it's okay if it's just a tad bit shorter but you want it to be within probably like an inch or two of what you originally had on the mower as long as it's the original string. So boom. Now let's take our vice grips off. And uh, there we go. So we'll put it back on the mower. One thing to one thing of note whenever you do this, they have these little, I guess they're guards against debris and whatnot. Make sure that your tab goes inside of your um, mount there. Uh, on both sides of these classic engines. The um, pull rope on these classic engines are a little bit different than or the little engine shroud is a little bit different than what you find on, say, like a, uh, a Bolens with the classic engine on them. Uh, the three and a half horse classics are a little unique in the way that they are built. Again, hand tighten first.
nothing crazy tight just enough to make sure that it's not going to go anywhere you don't want to strip those either we'll pin up my pull rope this is the best way to buy pull rope about a hundred foot rolls because you're gonna if you do this in any sort of near the volume like I do like last year I turned around almost 100 push mowers um, you'll go through that like water so we'll throw our old one away And I'm gonna look around. I think, I know I got some cables and whatnot and the handle came with it. I might have something that works for a cable for this thing. I may not, I don't know. But I'm gonna search around. If not, then I'm just gonna go ahead and do the little toggle switch thing and uh, see what we got so stand by I'll be right back all right guys pardon the Sun but I have hooked up I decided not to use well I didn't have really an option um, the cable I had here at home was a little too short for this particular mower what I used to do for these cheap mowers that didn't have any safety cables or whatever is I used to use a um, a couple of zip ties and just kind of pull the zip tie out and then you push it over to ground it out I wanted to try this toggle switch this time um, And it seems to work. Okay. It's a little backwards for the reason being that we're not Powering something we're actually Turning it off. So whenever you turn off something you actually have to Turn on it's like turning on the ground as opposed to turning it off. So the little toggle switch here if I put it to the O which is usually off it means the ground is off but I'll show you we'll crank it up and to turn it off it's like you turn the ground on so you just hit BAM and it turns it off. So I think that's perfectly doable. It's great because you can just reach down and go boom instead of having to walk all the way down. And like I said, I pretty much have not had any issues with, I shouldn't have any issue with that. I'm gonna take this little clamp here, which conveniently is on the mower. And I'm just gonna put the wire in that and that'll help keep it out of the way some. which is nice. And then I'm going to use a little bit of electrical tape. I'm gonna tape up these right here to protect them. I've got that zip tied in a hole. It's not going anywhere. Cut the zip tie right here, cut it right down there. Use some electrical tape around this as well. And I might tape it up a little bit right here just to keep it from you know snagging something if the new owner decides to use it anyways um all that's left is that and a little bit of dress up with uh sharpening the blade and changing the oil so i'm gonna go ahead and get to servicing it i'll go ahead and wash it and we will give it a final look and start pretty happy with how this turned out this was a nice little experiment too um I'm going to start implementing this on my future mowers that I don't have any um, safety cables for because it works extremely well, it seems. It seems like it works a lot better than uh, what I had been doing. So it's basically just like a throttle cable, like the old throttle cable style, except you just flip a switch. So I think that's, y'all let me know what you think. I think that's a lot safer than what I was doing with the zip ties. Um, and uh, we'll just go from there and just use that moving forward. Like I said, I got all these toggle switches for next to nothing. I just need to buy a cheap wire connector kit for next, you know, for very little cost as well, and we'll be good. So let me wash it. We'll give it a final look, and we'll wrap this up. All right, guys, there is it all 
washed and whatnot. Um, pleasant, well, not pleasantly surprised, but happy with how this turned out, honestly. I am very happy with it. Really, really like the whole toggle switch idea. Um, definitely going to implement it on all of my future mowers that I don't have any sort of, uh, uh, what is it, bail cable or whatever with it. So, like I said, very, very, very happy with how that turned out. So, let me give you a final start. I did um, run it after I start or after I washed it. So, I'll give you a walk around too. toggle switch as you can see I just kind of dressed it up a little bit too all right guys so let's wrap this thing up here very like I said very happy with how it turned out so these are the mowers I don't really make a ton of money on It's just nice to save some from the dump, you know. So, we put a new diaphragm on it. Um, did the whole wiring deal with the switch. And then uh, put a different plug on it. And that's about all we had to do to this, apart from clean it up, sharpen the blade, and change the oil. So, I uh, hope you all enjoyed this. Nice little $50 mower. I appreciate you all watching as always. Um, my Instagram and Facebook are right here on the end board right after this clip. And I hope you all uh, follow me there and follow me right here on YouTube. So I'll catch y'all next time.